If I can get the kids to come down, we'll have either a vacuuming or a uh, children's sermon, one or the other. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, let me ask you guys a question. How many of you guys are lucky enough, and I mean privileged enough, to be able to operate one of these fine pieces of machinery at your house. Are you? Really? You have to? It's one of your chores. Okay, then you are our man this morning. I noticed that some stuff was tracked in, and while, while we're having our, our lesson, I want you, to, want you to run the tornado. All right, now, he's going to need some help. He needs a helper, so I need somebody who is strong and powerful to help him out. Why don't you come over here? He looks strong and powerful to me. All right, so you're going to run the vacuum, and I want you, since you're strong and powerful, to come here and hold it right there in the palm of your hand. All right? All right, go. Right here. The, the thing? Well, I thought you said you knew how to run one of these. All right. I don't hear any noise. Maybe you guys should make the noise. Make the noise for him. <laughs> Something's not right. Something's not right. All right. All right. Stop. Now, you're making the tracks on the floor, but there, there's nothing happening, is there? Now, well, what's the problem? Well, yeah, it is. He said he was powerful. Well, right, right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, guys. Let's come back over here and sit down. You can drop the cord right there. I'll get it. All right. So now, you guys made the noise. He was pushing the vacuum. We had the vacuum plugged into a powerful source of power there, but nothing happened. You weren't able to make the vacuum cleaner run. He wasn't able to vacuum, and all the noise that you guys made didn't help. The, well, there's no dirt on there, but there's, it didn't help any, anything come up off the floor. So let me ask you guys a question. Do you guys ever think about people sometimes being just like that, just like that vacuum cleaner? Maybe we're making the right noises and we're moving in the right direction, supposedly, and maybe we think we're plugged into something that has some power to it, but it's not real, right? It's not, it's not working, okay? Now, the biggest problem with our example this morning is the power source that you were plugged into, right? If we had went around over there in the piano, there's a, there's a normal wall plug, 110, NEMA 510 plug over there, receptacle, we could plug you right in, we'd have had the beater bar action going and the suction, and you'd have, you'd have been going, right? But we had you plugged into a different power source, right? All right, now, he tried. He did try. I, I, I could tell in his face he was squeezing that plug, hoping that something, something would go. So we as people sometimes, as I've mentioned, try to plug into all sorts of things that we believe are going to provide some sort of power or sort, some sort of energy or something for us to, to kind of keep us going in life, okay? Now, sometimes those things are sports activities, okay? Sometimes it's just coming to church, we think that by, you know, pulling, our, pulling ourselves into the, the garage, we, we become a car. Just by coming to church, we, we just are, are Christian just because we're here. Uh, other times, people find fulfillment or they try to find power in uh, their job or money, okay? Friends, things like that. But where does the power come from? Well, let me tell you what the Bible says. In, in Romans uh, 1, chapter 16, it says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For the gospel is the righteousness of God is revealed, and righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Okay, so the power comes from God, okay? And the gospel, which is Jesus Christ, and the story, the true story, of Jesus Christ, how he came as a baby to earth, lived a perfect life, died for our sins on the cross, 
and was resurrected on the third day and went to heaven to sit at the right hand of God, and he will return for those who believe in him. That is where the true power comes from. Now, we can't plug a vacuum cleaner into that. But if you plug a person into that, then you get the power. The Bible tells us that in Acts also, that we get the power from God. Okay? Now, I gave you guys an example with the vacuum cleaner. But the question is, how do other people find out about this power that we've talked about this morning? Yes. There you go. We have to go ye therefore into all the world, right? Be a missionary, right? We have to tell people about it, okay? Now, read just something else here out of Romans, but your answer is exactly right. We have to go and tell. Also, God has given us, given us some clues. And if we read on in Romans 1, it says in verse 20, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power, and His divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. Now, that is enough to get you in trouble, right? Because we're without excuse for not recognizing God's power. But we need to do, as you've said, to tell others about God. Go and tell and make disciples. Doing as we saw this morning, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? Okay? So, I challenge you this morning, if you're not plugged in like the vacuum cleaner, you're of no use. You might be moving around the floor, you might be making all the right noises and doing the right things, but you're not doing anything, right? Because you're plugged into the wrong power source. So let's get plugged into the power source of God through faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And then once we do that, we'll have the power of God, not just the power of some strong young man.